If you need to sterilize an empty mixture tube, do not use heat sterilization exceeding 390 degrees Fahrenheit for the silicone tube or 200 degrees Fahrenheit for the clamps and end caps. Other methods such as gas sterilization may be used as well. In this video, we will work with the type 2 mixture tube, which has two chambers, and a type 3 mixture tube, which has three chambers. The first step in the process of creating a mixture tube is inserting the clamp onto the silicon tube. We begin by inserting the tube through the bottom of the clamp first. Once the tube is through the clamp, we continue by pulling it through the side of the clamp until we get to the desired volume. At that point, you can begin threading the tube through the upper hole of the clamp. It is important to note that the clamp must be always facing outward towards the open end of the tube. For type 3 tubes, Install the second clamp using the exact same process before proceeding with the next step in the creation of your tube. The tube should now look like this. For a type 3 mixture tube, the clamps need to be rotated so it can rest on the table as shown here. To insert the first cap into the tube, shove it directly into the first hole of the tube. Make sure you have a complete tight fit so that the cap is completely inserted as shown. The next step is to create a loop with the zip tie. Wrap it around the end cap and cinch the zip tie so it fits snugly. And then cut off the excess of the zip tie using the crimpers. To put the first fluid into the tube, begin by drawing the fluid into the syringe as shown. Tap the syringe and purge it of any air bubbles that might be in there. You may then insert the syringe into the tube as shown and slowly 
drip the liquid along the sides of the tube so that it drops down into the first chamber. A so slow pour ensures that there will be no air bubbles in the bottom chamber. Once the pour is complete, you may begin clamping the chamber, carefully ensuring that no air bubbles or overfill are present. This may take several attempts. Closing the clamp too high will leave an air bubble Closing it too low will leave excess fluid on top. In each case, adjust the clamp until you get a proper clamp. Proper clamping will ensure no bubbles or no overages. Leaving three to four notches next to the tube will ensure a good tight clamp. After filling the chamber, you may choose to clean out the excess fluid from the chamber. A cotton swab will clear out the majority of the fluid. However, you may also choose to flush out the tube with liquid such as water or alcohol. After the tube is swabbed and flushed, you can use the nitrogen spray gas as a means to clear out the remaining fluid. Turn the tube upside down and spray the gas into the tube. The fluid will drip out of the tube. Loading fluid into the second chamber of the mixture tube will follow the same process as the first chamber. Load a syringe and slowly drip the fluid into the mixture tube, letting the fluid drip down the sides of the tube. Once the fill is complete, clamp and clear using the methods that were shown earlier in this video. The best method for inserting solids into the tube is a funnel. If no funnel is available, you can make one by cutting a small piece of paper as shown here. As you can see, a simple folded paper is the right size to fill our tube. You then use the funnel to pour the solids directly into the second chamber of the tube. Once this is complete, you may close the clamp on the second chamber of the tube, shutting it tightly so none of the solids can escape.
must then purge the third chamber using a water filled syringe to fill that chamber with water and shake it and drain the water from the tube. Then use the compressed gas to finish purging the third chamber. After you've completed filling the first two chambers, you may now take the second end cap with the hole in it as shown, inserted into the tube. Install the wire tie as you did with the first side of the tube. Now draw fluid into the syringe. Insert the syringe into the end cap hole. Tap it to avoid bubbles next to the clamp and complete inserting fluid into the tube. You may now take one of the screws, first begin by inserting the screw into the hole by hand. And then Complete screwing it in using the Phillips screwdriver until the O-ring compresses. An alternate method for filling the third chamber can be used if you choose to fill the third chamber before the end plug is in place. With this method, you may use either a syringe, a pipette, or another method to fill the third chamber. After filling the third chamber, insert the cap into the tube as shown. Take caution as the liquid will spill out through the hole as you can see here. You may then add the screw and the wire tie as shown earlier. Taping and marking of the tube needs to be done for type 3 tubes only. For a type 3 tube, the astronaut needs to know which clamp is released first or whether both clamps are released together. Color coding has been agreed upon by NASA and Nanorax as the means to do this. Place green tape on the first side to be unclipped. This is known as the activation side. Always put the tape below the zip tie. For dual activation tubes, use green tape on both ends. We then place blue tape on the second side to be unclipped, which is known as the deactivation side. Once you have taped both sides, use a green marker to mark the clip on the activation side. Begin 
by drawing a box around the ridges on the clip and then color in each ridge as shown. Be sure that the marker color on the clip corresponds with the tape color on that end of the mixture tube. You may then use a blue marker to mark the deactivation side as shown. To prepare your mixture tube for shipment, place it in the plastic bag that it came in. Roll the plastic bag up as shown. It is preferable to tape the bag shut. Before shipping, please verify that the post-flight return shipping form is in the box with the mixture tube.